Uh, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Cushion meeting for July 12 at noon. This is a hybrid meeting. The meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Um, the website has call-in numbers for this meeting as well for those who are not participating by Zoom. Over to you, Carolyn. Okay. Well, I think the biggest question we have, Mike, is how how can we have charging stations that are affordable to us? So I'm just going to throw it out there sure. and figure out. Oh, here David Keith is coming. Good. He's he's our chair of our energy committee. Okay. And, I, and I'm thinking that Lori is on C Stevens. Um, um, yes. Oh. Okay. Is Go it? Sorry, so, is it okay if I step in for a second? Sure, sure, yeah, sure, just, but sure, let me just jump in. And I want to okay. thank the chairwoman for, uh, for for hosting this meeting along with her, her members of her board and certainly uh, the, the town of Deerfield um, for being being uh, great partners with us. Uh, so number one, I do have a, a group of people here from Eversource. Uh, most important here is Richard Richard Chin from uh, manager of our, of our rates. Um, he'll be able to be one of the best subject matter experts on this issue. Um, so... How do you want us to go? Do you want him to just jump in and start or? Yeah, unless Tim, is there a way, better way to? Um, just to, to hold on a second, Lori Basada. Well, I, I just wanted to say that. Speaking to the mic, please. Oh, sorry. Um, I think up until now, we've been paying a, a $10 per kilowatt hour distribution demand charge and $10 per kilowatt hour transmission demand charge for every kilowatt over two kilowatts each month. So that has had us pay like uh, $200 for one car's charging for, you know, getting five kilowatts worth of energy. So that's the situation that's just not tenable. Yeah, so I can fully explain all those things and how the new options are going to benefit you. I have a slide presentation, so I thought maybe that would be the best thing for me to go through the slide presentation. And then, um, and then I'll open it up to questions. Does that work for everyone? Um David, go ahead. David, Will we have access to the slides after this. Can I can you... send the slides to to everyone after this. Great, great, thanks. And I so I just want to introduce Lori is there in the town hall. She and David are on our energy committee. That um, MA, so MA is here also. Oh, and MA too. I'm sorry, I can't see. So, go ahead. Hey, hey Richard, sorry for jumping in again. It's Mike Kane. Did you? Uh, is that the one you provided for me? That that. Uh... Was that no, I think it's uh, no, I think it's a, it's a slightly different. I, I basically uh, took a look at the rates that that were mentioned earlier, the, the Western Mass customer see. So I populated the the rates there. So I'm going to show some examples of bill of what you would see, you know, based on last year's rates and then and the new options. So you can see clearly. Okay, know, Rich, if, you want, if if you want to send that to me, I can get it to uh, the, you know the town manager and assistant town manager, and obviously. Okay. Oh, is that the best way to do it? Is that good, Madam Chair? Is that good, Madam Chair? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Thank All right. You. Let me send it to you. Sorry for not doing that earlier. No, that's fine. We would just want to make sure we have the slides. So I think you can share on the screen now. We don't have to wait for Chris to put okay. it up. Okay. All right. Let me do that then. Can folks, uh, let me know when folks can see this. Yep, yeah, we can see this. All right, terrific. Let me put in a slide presentation mode here. Maybe that'll be better. Let's see. Okay, so does uh, this work okay? Can everyone see the cover slide? Yes. Okay, terrific. 
Okay, so um, every source introduced rates uh, that are expected to meet the needs of electric vehicle charging stations. You know, I understand that the, the issues that folks are, are facing with their charging stations because uh, everyone's operating on rates that were created more for our general service customers. And, but EV stations have unique profiles. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of an introduction regarding, you know, how the rates uh, that work today or last year compared to the new options that folks will see. So you know, historically, you know, separately metered um, electric vehicle charging stations struggled with the company's rates that utilize demand charges, as was stated earlier. And demand charges did typically bill on charging stations or any other customer's maximum 15 minute demand. And the reason we bill on demand is because demand reflects the, the distribution system, the wires and the system, the capacity that we need to build out the system. But it doesn't necessarily uh, uh, work for every customer because some customers are have low usage but may have higher demand. So the, the operating characteristics of customers matter. Um, for EV charging stations, they have a particularly unusual characteristic compared to most of our general service customers because they see very low traffic, especially at this initial stage of the industry, because there's just not as many electric vehicles as there will be in the future. So you may have a charging station that is operating, but you may only see a, a small number of cars that go through that charging station, but you utilize the full capacity of the distribution system as needed to serve that particular station. So there's a bit of a mismatch here because the, we're charging for the service, the cost of service for the station, but you may not see enough traffic coming through those stations in order to make it affordable for the, the customers that are coming through to um, each of those stations. Um, as a result of this, you know, the, 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 from listening to customers, from the, from the legislation that's been passed, from efforts from DPU and other interveners, you know, we're, there have been several different dockets that were in play last year. As a result of those dockets, you know, we've had um, two different proposals that came out and that have been approved by the Department of Public Utilities. Um, the first one it has to do with what was uh, achieved in the rate case. So Eversource completed a rate case at the end of uh, 2022. And in that rate case, I revised uh, the small general service rates. So previously, um, I think earlier, it was mentioned that there was a, about a $20 demand charge for small general service customers. That was termed rate G0 in Western Mass. And I basically revised that rate uh, in, in the rate case. I broke it up into uh, a I renamed that class as rate G1 and made it smaller. Rather than zero to 349 kilowatts, which was the old definition, it's now a smaller rate class that's up to 100 kilowatts. And I introduced a non-demand option. So that, that, that class has now a demand and a non-demand price. And customers can opt into the price uh, the, um, design that works best for them. And so a non-demand price option is gonna work better for these EV stations. And then <clears throat> effective July 1st, 2023, just this past uh, week, uh, rate EV2 was approved. So this was a docket that was specifically regard uh, relating to EV stations that was ongoing with the department last year. And there there's a more complicated rate design that has like a sliding scale demand charges, which I will illustrate later. This is for larger stations. This would be stations 100 kilowatts or greater than 100 kilowatts. So we believe that these new offerings are going to help the growth of these EV stations and address the issues that you're concerned about. So here I'm going to talk a little bit about this rate G1, the non-demand price option that was introduced uh, um, following the rate case last year. So in 2022, Western Mass customers at 349 kilowatts or less, they were assigned to rate G0. So this rate has a total demand charge of $21.14 per kilowatt. That was the, the charge last year. So following the rate case, I, I revised uh, um, the class. It's a smaller class now. It's called G1, and it's up to 100 kilowatts. And there's going to be a non-demand option. So that non-demand option means that there's no demand charge, but there will be a higher per kWh charge instead of the lower kWh charge and higher demand charge. Um, as I mentioned, there's two price options, there's demand or non-demand. So customers with high energy usage, they might be better off on the demand charge because that would be a smaller volumetric charge and a bigger demand charge. They're going, generally large customers benefit from that. 
But EV stations with the low energy usage, they're probably better off on a non-demand charge because they have low volumes going through there. So the higher per kWh rate will have less of an impact compared to a demand charge, which is more of a, an impact on an on and off basis. Um, new customers, they should default to rate G1, you know, unless they otherwise elect it. And we introduced this pricing to assist customers with low load factors. So by low load factor, it, I mean customers with low usage relative to their demand, like an EV station. So small EV stations with low traffic struggle with the high demand charges under rate G0. And I'm showing you an illustration of how the bill works. So, for, so there was a customer charge of $30, and then there was this um, $21 demand charge for anything over two kilowatts. And then there was a, an energy charge, and then you have the supply price. So you can see here that the demand charge is the largest component of the bill. And it comes out to a total bill of 1377 in my illustration here. So if I take that total charge and then divide it by the 1800 kilowatt hours of usage here in this example, um, I get an average rate of 77 cents per kilowatt hour, which is very high for, uh, for um, an electric vehicle that's going through. So if you uh, compare that to, um, the effective price for gasoline, let's say at 350 per gallon, that's about 40 cents per kilowatt hour. So 77 cents is going to be above what a customer would normally see uh, at a gasoline station. Sorry, David, did you have a question? Um, I'm just wondering, when you're talking about 100 kilowatts, aren't all charging stations way over that? So there would be a separate rate. Well, no, uh, there will be a separate rate for the hundred for stations greater than 100 kilowatts, which I'll address later. A typical charging station, like a level two charging station, would be anywhere from 10 kilowatts to larger. So it depends on how many stations you have. You could have uh, a, a, a station, a lot maybe that has two stations in there, two 10 kilowatt stations. That would be 20 kilowatts. I guess what you, I'm or you could have a bank. Maybe I'd just stupid <laughs> no. but the um demand charge on ours kicks in at two kilowatts two thousand kilowatts how do we get there without having i mean if it's a kilowatt two thousand kilowatts in half an hour it's obviously bigger than a hundred kilowatts going into it isn't it so um, if i understand correctly you said that uh, the site that you're looking at is two thousand kilowatts I've, I've been under the understanding that the demand charge were, kicks in at 2,000 kilowatts. That the demand charge kicks in at 3,000 kilowatts? 2,000 kilowatt hours. No, no. The, the, the demand charge is separate from the kilowatt hours. So the demand charge, the old demand charge on, under rate G0 would kick in for any demand above 2 kilowatts. Yeah, okay. So now, just so we understand, so I go and I plug in my EV, and it draws 10 kilowatts. I, I don't know if I'm speaking correctly here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be subject to a demand charge right out the gate because it's higher than 2 kilowatts. Under the old rate, yes. Under rate G0, the, yeah. we would be built, you would be billed that 10 kilowatts minus the 2 kilowatts. So it would be 8 kilowatts times the 2114. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Can I just throw in one more question? Sure. <laughs> Since we're looking at, um, so right right now we have two ports, and um, what I understood is that a um, a, a typical the two forty volt chargers, that's the level two, could draw seven kilowatts. So if both ca two cars are pl um, plugged in at the same time. It's like a, a half an hour's worth of or is it 15 minutes? I saw 15 minutes earlier, um, you know, volume, that much demand, um, that would be seven times two, 14 times the 20. So that's changing. But the, my question is, if we have, you know, four or eight charging stations and somebody's plugged in at the same time, and, and there are four level twos, if we add four more level twos, at seven times four, 28, so I, I guess I would love to see at some point, I, I mean, I, I am sensing that right now, non-demand makes sense, but I'm, I'm lo loving to see how it would play out if we got a certain number, uh, amount of usage. You know, we, 
we could have a high volume being drawn and it's one one segment of 30 minutes for the whole month is that correct the highest usage over the month it's the highest use it's the highest demand over the month is how a demand charge works right, right. okay and, because, the and, then, and, then there's, and then there's level three chargers so i don't yep. know and I, I'm going to address these larger stations. So if you're talking about whether the impact is charging stations that are larger in size or a bank of charging stations, and what would the impact would for that be, that's going to be this rate EV2. So I'm going to address that later in this slide presentation. For now, I'm just talking about customer uh, stations that are under 100 kilowatts in size or that uh, uh, associated with a particular account. Thanks. Okay. So here I'm going to show what the how the the new option affects you. So new G1 is is going to have uh, a non-demand price option, and you can see here that the effect is going to be dramatic. So you know, the demand charge has been removed, and the per kilowatt hour rate is higher. So I'm just going to skip back a little bit so you can see the difference in the pricing. So the customer charge is the same. The demand charge has been eliminated. So the old energy charge was 2.9 cents, what you see there. The new one is nine cents, but because the volume is low, it's not going to result in the same type of charges that you saw previously. So previously, the, the, the biggest obstacle was the demand charge. So I'm going to go back again. You see that there was a $1,000 um, demand charge here, and you had a much smaller energy portion. So under the new design, there's going to be a $30 customer charge, but there's no more demand charge. So that, that, that um, large price uh, obstacle has been removed. You have a higher energy charge, but it's, not going, it's, not as no, no, it's nowhere near the demand charge that you saw previously because of the low volumes. And so the total bill here is $480 compared to the $1,377 that you saw before. So we're talking about a 65% reduction in, in um, the cost to the customer. And the average rate has dropped dramatically. It's now at $0.27. Cents. So I'm benchmarking this against what you would see for um, gasoline. So $0.27 cents based on the fuel efficiencies of EVs today, that's about $2.40 per gallon. When we made that um, filing for EVs and, and, and we're doing this type of analysis, gas prices were lower. But today, they're, they're, they're probably at, they're at like around $3.50 or so. So this is a very competitive price that customers would be seeing at the charging station. Rich, this example, I have a question about. Okay, so sure. it says customer. Who is the customer? Is that the town owning the EV station? Yes. Or is it the person going to plug in their car? So it would be the town, the, the town owning the EV station or any owner of the EV station because we don't set the price that, that's being charged to the customer. So I, I showed this average rate because it would be a potential price where if you were getting charged, um, let's say the town of Deerfield had a charging station, they saw a monthly bill of $480 and you saw this usage and you were billing customers on a volumetric rate, you would want to bill at least 27 cents per kilowatt hour in order to make yourselves whole. So, and I'm benchmarking that against gas. So it's, it's at 27 cents, that's $2.40 per gallon for a gasoline. So it's a very competitive price. Yeah, and a further question to that. Um, Deerfield has an aggregation. Uh, we're part of an aggregation uh, and we are currently getting electricity at 9.4 cents a kilowatt. So, or kilowatt hour, right? And so, um, why don't our rates apply to the electricity that's going into the uh, charging station that we own? Is that because there's layers of service providers involved here with people who can charge people money through credit cards, et cetera? So, uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. So this 15 cents I'm using here, that's the energy supply price that Eversource provides. You would just replace this number here with the nine cents that you have as an aggregation. I just don't have that information. Okay. Regarding yeah, I just wanted to understand it's so it, when our aggregation goes up to 14 cents in January, we would have that as our rate. That's right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to the larger stations, larger stations. So I was previously, I was really talking about these smaller stations, hundred kilowatts or less and I removed the demand charge as a higher kilowatt hour charge, but you can see that there are substantial savings as a result of that change. 
So for larger stations, it's a bit more complicated. And this, so this was in a separate docket. The, the G1 on-demand that I talked about earlier, that was a proposal that came out of the rate case. Here, this was, there was an entire proceeding at the Department of Public Utilities that addressed specifically EV stations. And uh, for these larger stations that was greater than 100 kilowatts, I'm still introducing a demand charge, but it's going to be based on the customer's load factor. And I'll, I'll explain this a little bit. So there's, it's, this rate is called rate EV2, and it just became effective in July. Rate G1 was, it was, a, was um, approved in January. So that's been around for, for since the beginning of the year, and customers could um, qualify for it now. Rate EV2 wasn't available until this past week because it needed approval from the department. And the way this particular rate works is that there are four tiers. There's two, which I've named A, B, C, and D. So they all have the same customer tar charge, $225. And then the demand charge varies depending on your load factor, which I'll explain. So you can see in this first tier here, A, the demand charge is zero and you have a higher per kilowatt hour charge, eight cents. And then as you move down the line and these options, you'll see that the a demand charge starts being introduced. It's $3 here, $6, and then ultimately $12 in the last tier. And the per kilowatt hour charges decreases. It goes from eight cents to seven cents to six cents to five cents. And the reason I'll explain why, why we did this in terms of the tiers. Um, for now, anyone who enrolls in EV2, we're going to default them in this first year to, to um, the A option, which means no demand charge and you get this energy rate. And following that, we're going to do uh, each successive year, we're going to do an evaluation of the load factor. And the load factor is what I'm showing here is calculated as your build kilowatt hours, which is the volume of energy over the entire month, divided by the capacity, which is, or the demand of the station times 24 hours times the number of days in the month, which is typically 30 for, for our billing periods. And that'll give us like a percentage. So, and it basically represents the percentage of, the, of kilowatt hours relative to um, that's possible from your station. If your station ran like 24 hours a day for 30 days, you would be at a hundred percent load factor, which is you know not realistic, but, um, so typically low factors for general service customers are probably around 30 or 40 percent. For a Navy station, they're much lower. Right now, they're probably they're all on, typically under five percent, but they could be higher. You know, as more traffic comes through and as stations get larger, the, the, the characteristics are going to change, and that's what these low factor calculations are intended to address. So. Um, initially, we're going to assume that everyone is going to be under 5% for that first year. Uh, in the second year, in June, we're going to do an assessment of the accounts that are online already, and we're going to look at their, their, their billing demand and their energy, and we'll calculate what their load factor is, and we'll reassign them to, to the rates. They may stay in, in option A, or they can move to B or C or D, depending on their, on, um, their load factor. And they would see the pricing that corresponds to that load factor bracket. Um, this particular rate EV2, it's limited. It's only in play until June 30th, 2033. It could be extended. Um, that depends. It, it wouldn't just conclude. I think there would be another proceeding before the TPU to be, really evaluate the state of these charging stations. Are, are, is, there, is there enough traffic going through these charging stations to merit the elimination of this EV2? If not, it's likely that the rate will continue. And I'll show you the impacts of these rates compared to um, the rates that you would have seen last year. Can I just ask a quick question on that slide? Sure. So with this customer, <clears throat> customer, that's like our monthly meter fee, which currently is $30. That's for G1. For the smaller one, the monthly charge is $30. For these larger customers, the monthly charge is $225. And the reason for that is because the meter is very different. So for a smaller customer, it, it doesn't measure um, information in the same granularity. And also the, because the, the potential size of these charging stations, the, the interconnections are very different, the voltage is different, um, and they just require more sophisticated equipment. What does large 
how how large is large? <laughs> so for here for rate EV2, I'm setting it at greater than 100 kilowatts. At, at any one one time. At, for the billing of the uh, in the month. That's right. So when you, again, just so we understand, there's a lot of complexity here. When you say greater than 100 kilowatts, does that mean that the station is capable of delivering more than 100 kilowatts at one, one instant? Or so if it's, a, if it's an 80 kilowatt capacity, then it can never be over 100 kilowatts. In the beginning, I think that's, if we had no other information, that's what we would, well, in the beginning, we would assign you to option A anyway, so there will be no demand charge. But when we do this calculation, we're not going to look at the rating of the station. Uh, we're going to look at the actual build demand that we see on the meter. Because mm -hmm. I, from my understanding is that the, the stations may be rated at, at a certain um, capacity, but the draw is different because uh, the draw is predicated on the capabilities of the vehicles themselves. Okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm belaboring this, but my understanding is kilowatt is the amount of power instantaneous and kilowatt hour is the amount of actual cumulative, you know, power that you're purchasing. Correct. So one seems to me to be about the ability of a, of a physical structure to deliver energy instantaneously. So we have this EV charger that has two ports now, Right. But, but it's capable of having additional ports put on it, but it, it's, a, it's it, a slow charger. Yeah. And it can't relative. deliver. I mean, it, it's, I don't know what its kilowatt rating is. So I'm just trying to understand that if it's physically impossible for it to exceed a hundred kilowatt hours, then we would always remain in EV2A until it's no longer possible to have that rate. Is that correct? It would always be, that's right. So if it's great, well, if it's greater than 100 kilowatts, it will be, it will always be on EV2. That was the rate that, that it was elected. It, but the option, the price options will vary yeah. depending on the amount of traffic that goes through the station. Okay. But Thank the you. level three chargers, I was trying to look it up, I forgot. Um, so the level two can draw seven kilowatts, I think. Um, but the level three can draw more like 100 kilowatts each charger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we had a bank of those, that would be a whole different story. So you have a bank of those, those would be on EV2. Whereas if you had a smaller station, you would be on G1. Okay. So they can, even if they're in the same parking lot, they have different infrastructure so they can be charged at different rates. So it depends on how, how it's being metered. So if you've had the same parking lot and they're all banked together and they were being served by a single line and there was an account, it would look, it would, the rate would depend on the aggregate of all of those stations behind that particular meter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one final question. Um, I've heard that because this is a standalone and it's not tied into like, for instance, if, if this EV charger was linked to the town hall, electrical infrastructure, then it would be entirely different economics than if it's standing alone. And can you explain that in a really easy to understand way? Sure. So uh, rate EV2 is only for standalone charging stations. So I just want to make that delineation. Delineation. Um, G1 is available to all, all customer, all general service customers. Doesn't matter if you're separate EV station or you're tying it behind a building. So, but more specifically to your question, uh, oftentimes it's more economic for customers to tie an EV charging station behind an existing meter. Um, I'll use an example of like a mall or something where they already have substantial usage in there that's being metered and picked up. So, uh, and that demand may be, uh, uh, let's say the demand of the mall is, I don't know, one megawatt. If you add a charging station in there, it's not going to uh, necessarily set a new demand for the customer because the, the demand is already being picked up by the, the general mall load. So as a result, that charging station might be better off going on to uh, the existing um, meter that's there serving the building because it's, it's a small part of the, of the larger usage. Okay, that's clear. Okay. So I'm gonna go through some examples to show you the same thing I did with G1 to show you the pricing and, and the, uh, the impact. So 
It's the same issue with the larger EV stations as with the smaller EV stations. This has to do with the traffic, the amount of traffic that's going through these stations. So um, last year, customers, I'm looking at a larger customer here. So if it, if it was a 400 kilowatt um, customer, so we're, let's say several DC fast chargers on there, they would have been assigned to rate T2, which is, um, uh, and that was the rate that was effective last year. Again, this was changed a little bit following the, the rate case, but the demand charges are still in effect for rate um, T2, which is now being called um, uh, G3, which is going to be confusing, but let's put that aside. Does this, this T2 rate would have, would have been the rate that assigned to an EV station at 400 kilowatts. And you can see there's a $760 customer charge, um, a $19 demand charge, and then this rate was also time differentiated. So there was a two cent per kilowatt hour peak charge, which was the hours between 12 and eight. And then there was an off peak charge for all other hours, including weekends at 1.9 cents per kilowatt hour. And so you can see here again, the demand charge was, was, was a significant component here because the usage is small relative to the demand. And so this total bill here is $10,890 for a 400 kilowatt station. And that average rate, which is this amount divided by the total usage, 14,400 kilowatt hours is 76 cents per kilowatt hour, which is very high, you know, relative to like what you would see at a gas station. So I think before I showed that 40 cents was probably like $3.50 uh, um, at, at the pump. Um, so this is 76 cents. So it's going to be very high for an individual customer that was going through an EV station. But I think rate EV2 is going to address this kind of low load factor customer. So here I'm showing what the same type of same customer, same usage, and I'm showing the impact of this new rate. So the customer charge is lower. So it's not the $760, it's the $225. Um, so I'm showing there is no more demand charge you know, under that first tier. A, because I'm, this is a, a low load factor customer, I'm assuming 5% load factor, which is this amount of usage. And there's gonna be a higher kilowatt hour rate. There's no more time differentiation under rate EV2 um, because it, it didn't really make sense because you know, an EV station can't control the traffic that's going to unless it wants to shut down, which is kind of contra contrary to, I think the intent of what the EV stations wants to do. So there's no time of use differentiation here. Um, so you can see that without the demand charge, and even though there's a higher energy charge, the price is much lower. So rather than the $10,000 that you saw before, it is now $3,000 for this particular station. And we're now down to an average rate of 25 cents per kilowatt hour. You know, at 25 cents per kilowatt hour, that's $2.20 per gallon at the pump. And so the customer sees, you know, a 67% bill reduction, you know, under for the same size station compared to what the rate they would have been assigned last year. And as the load factor goes up, does that change? Yeah, so I'm going to show illustrate that the, the, um, the impact of load factors and why I'm doing that as well. So higher load factors. So I want to show that uh, now demand charges become a smaller portion of the bill when the load factor increases because the load when the load factor increases that means there's more traffic there's more volume but the demand doesn't necessarily change you just have more traffic coming through because and, and as a result of more cars coming through there's going to be more kilowatt hours so here i'm assuming a 30 percent load factor so that the, the demand doesn't change but there's more volume going going through so there's greater number of kilowatt hours so this is the rate that was assigned last year for this size station. So same customer charge, you know, same demand charge, but now you're gonna have um, higher um, kilowatt hour charges because of the much higher volumes. This is 86,000 uh, kilowatt hours, whereas in my prior example, it was 14,000 kilowatt hours. So now we have a total cost of $23,000 under this um, rate last year. And that comes out to an average rate of 27 cents per kilowatt hour, which is, it's comparable to what the EV2 rate was producing under that low load factor scenario. So at 27 cents, you know, that's going to be something around $2.40 per gallon at the pump. So that's again going to be reaching this kind of benchmark. Customers, I think, would see this as a reasonable price compared to what they would 
uh, um, fill a gasoline car at, at, the, um, at a gasoline station. So this was the rate from last year. Now I'm going to show what the, what the impact is of using EV2 when you move up to a higher um, load factor bracket. So here I'm showing this is the highest load factor bracket. So this would be the $12.18. This is option D that I showed previously. So this would be the highest demand charge that you can reach in under EV2 because this is a 30% load factor. So it has a very high volume. So high, the 86,000 kilowatt hours, 400 kilowatts of um, load. So you can see the energy and demand charges uh, on this bill are about the same and it's about $22,000. So previously under the old rate, it was 23, still a little bit cheaper. But the average rate is about the same. It's 27 cents you know, per kilowatt hour. So I think this EV2, what it shows is that as you move up in load factor, you're going to reach a, a reasonable uh, um, uh, cost to the charging station. And I mentioned earlier that the program, that this rate is temporary. It's supposed to be uh, a program that's in effect until 2033 as a 10 year program. And then that program is supposed to end and then customers would basically be moved to the otherwise applicable rate. In this case it would be that rate T2 that you saw under the assumption that stations are able to have this amount of traffic so that the change, the difference in, of moving in rates wouldn't be, would be very small. Um, if we don't see this kind of traffic through charging stations, it's likely that this EV2 would probably continue, but that's something to evaluate you know, in, in the future, 10, 10 years from now. So that's the, the end of the presentation. Hopefully it makes sense. Um, uh, and I'm willing to open to answer any questions that you may have. First thing on my mind is that what what is the procedure to change the existing charging station we have over to the G1? Do we need to do anything or is that going to happen automatically for us? Um, your station was probably changed over to G1, but it's probably not on the non-demand rate Sorry. if it was if it was an existing station because we just didn't know you know which stations wanted to which customers wanted to be on a non-demand or demand rate. So you would, I think the town of Deerfield should have a, a, an account executive. I would reach out to the account executive if you've, if you've got a list of stations or accounts and they can help you kind of get those accounts switched over. Yeah, if I, if I may put in here, we uh, did already submit the request to have our rate okay. changed over to the G1 non-demand okay. uh, and I believe it was approved. So we should start seeing that change. Great. Two questions for you, Rich. One is um, explain what the, uh, 15 cent basic service charge means. Sure. So basic service is the cost of energy supply. So energy supply is for Eversource means that we provide and uh, we procure energy from an energy supplier, just like any other customer would or the town of Deerfield would. So I think you mentioned you had an aggregator. So if you go out and you request for a bid for supply, someone like Constellation Energy might give you a, a bid price of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So we do the same thing. We go out for a bid and we procure whatever, whatever the winning bidder is, that's the price that we end up charging to customers. So the price that we have is 15 cents, you know, starting in July. That's the cost, price cost that we charge small commercial customers. Okay, so again, going back to um, the fact that the, the charging station is owned by the town and we have an aggregation, um, we're buying from somebody so we substitute in our rate in the basic service rate place yes. so if your bill is um uh if the supplier is billing on that on on the eversource bill we would basically not we would not apply the basic service bill we would take the supplier price that's a that's in effect for the town of deerfield and we would apply that okay and there was one other charge can you go back to the last slide you showed um so energy um how how is that different than the basic service so in other words mm -hmm. if we are buying from constellation as you say um does that energy charge go away too sure i can explain that 
Uh, no, because um, the demand, the customer demand and energy pieces here, they relate to distribution and transmission service. So mm -hmm. th that's, those are the wires that are owned by Eversource. And right. so we can't, we split this up into these components here based on the, the cost of the different elements of the system that we, that we need to serve the customers. And mm -hmm. we don't put it all in energy or all in demand, except for where it's needed, because it depends on the impact of customers, just like, like what we're discussing today. Like theoretically, we would put it all in demand because we size our system based on demand, but we can't do that all the time because it can cause you know, big impacts to customers. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we split it up between demand and energy. Right. And all of these things are controlled through the legislature. You go to the legislature and ask them or tell them what you think it costs you to deliver the services you deliver. And they uh, approve your rates for all of the, I don't know, um, yes, yeah, 15 la layers in each energy bill. Yeah, it's not the legislature, it's the Department of Public Utilities. So okay, when, right. when, we, when we want to seek a change in the rates, um, we have to go through what is called a rate case. So right. we basically assemble all, all of our costs, make our proposals for the rates to collect those costs, and it's adjudicated before the Department of Public Utilities. Okay, thank you. Okay. I, I guess um, we are going to be deciding how many charging stations and where to locate them. Is that, is that right? So I know one possibility is to add charging stations to the current meter. And the, um, that has been raised before, yeah. And, and then there is a series of others. I'm just wondering if we could actually get a um, hypothetical, what it might look like if we had this number of charging stations or this many level twos, this many level threes. I mean, we. When when we first looked into this, I was, you know, grappling with how do we really estimate how how much usage we're going to get. Um, and I'm glad that there's at least 10, 10 years here because, um, you know, I don't think there's a huge demand right now for our current charger. But it's also because we charge 70, 75 cents or 70, yeah, 75 cents per kilowatt hour. So if we can change that, that, that might help a lot. But um it's really hard to estimate how much usage we'll get if we put in another eight um, ports. So I, I guess I'm wondering if it would be possible to look at some different scenarios with you know two more stations, four more stations, eight more stations to help make the decision of how much, because um, I, I do think we need adequate number of charging stations for the adoption of EV vehicles. What I wonder is, it, is it the town's role or is it the state's role? Um, they have some at the Waitley Park and Ride, um, or is it more of a, you know, a large, you know, each individual company who has a lot of employees or, you know, the malls, like you said, I just don't know how much of the subsidizing this the town should do. Yeah, that's the million dollar question. I mean, I'm, uh, <laughs> it's pro it, I would say it's ultimately state public policy in, 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 all, in many ways. They're trying, it, the, the state has um, a, a climate goal by 2050, I think. So, and I think there's also efforts, I think, even on, on, the, uh, in, on the state to eliminate gasoline cars by, uh, to sale of gasoline cars by um, a certain year. I forget what the date was. So ultimately it's public policy, uh, but, We've also seen those things change. Sometimes those timelines are aggressive. So I, I don't know. I mean, though, but those that's those are very good questions. It's what makes it a struggle to design these races as well, because there are not that many of these cars or charging stations around. So it's, it's difficult to predicate uh, a design on something when it's constantly changing. I, I think um, it would be very helpful if um, the energy committee could give you a different, if you could work out the rates for a couple different scenarios of what we were proposing for the, our parking lot, our downtown parking lot, that would be so helpful so that we would know what would be the best choice for us um, at this point. I mean, obviously things change, but if we have the option, uh, I mean, we want, we want to be as progressive as possible towards this. However, we can't, we just can't afford to subsidize this kind of stuff either. So, um, it would be really great. I mean, is it possible to get some price quotes from you for different, um, 
you know, no, amount of stations? So I think you're talking about uh, an interconnection cost as well. Not uh, is that what you're talking about? How how much it would cost? Yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. I think you might want to talk to the account executive about exactly the um, what issues you're facing and what things you want to get accomplished. I think that's probably the best way to get an answer because I, I think I'm not able to give you a, a complete answer to that. Mm -hmm. We have uh, David Keith um, has a question. Um, this is just generic. Do you have, have you experienced, it, it seems like demand charges are aimed at cutting down peak use and at a 5% load, that seems like the perfect place to put a battery. Is anybody putting batteries with these stations? So that the battery charges on the off time and then you zap the cars uh, with a big battery. Um, I, I haven't seen that um, at, at this time because I think batteries, again, is something also that's new. So that's like another variable. I could see, um, some customers installing solar potentially too, or allocating yeah. credits through net metering. They can do. There are lots of different ways to go about it. I haven't seen um, batteries installed with an EV site necessarily, just because I think I think there's people are struggling with the same questions that you're asking today. How many stations do I have? How much traffic am I going to get? So right. it may not be yeah, worthwhile yeah. to yeah. build a station if there's not much load to serve. Yes. Yeah. So this is um, Steve Conti with the EverSource uh, Make Ready program. Um, just wanted to chime in that we have seen a couple instances where customers put in a battery integrated. Uh, Steve, uh, could you speak up? Um, we can't hear you. Can, can you can you hear me? Or no? uh, you're really quiet, Steve. <clears throat> uh, is this any better? No. <laughs> huh, how about now? Yes. That's a little better. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we, we have seen a couple instances of customers installing battery integrated charging stations, uh, fast charging stations. Um, the Mass DOT actually put one in out in uh, Greenfield at one of their um, service centers. Um, it is a good option for um, you know, reducing that demand. Uh, if you're looking at fast charging, um, you know, really reduces the uh, infrastructure needed um, as far as the interconnection to our distribution goes. Did they receive? Um, sorry, Steve. Did they receive a grant of any sort to to install that? We yeah, we funded we funded it through um, Make Ready, and I believe they installed they had a grant for the other station as well. Yeah, so those are the uh, challenges you would face whether or not right, there was right. a grant or special funding available for it. Yeah, because those those battery integrated ones are quite expensive, um, mm -hmm. so you would definitely need to uh, look into a grant for that. Yeah, probably not ours, <laughs> not for us, but maybe someday. So, Rich, just to recap, you suggested that we, so for instance, we're, we're about to build a municipal parking lot, and one of the, we're working with uh, a company to put in additional EV charging capacity. So, your suggestion was that we take these plans and talk with our account executive and say, under this scenario, so, for instance, if we link the new chargers directly to the same line that's feeding the old chargers, would it be more efficient or less efficient cost-wise for us? Um, because what we're currently looking at is, my understanding is, two independent stations with their own Meet power, metered power. Um, you know, so we we want to get the most cost-effective or decide it doesn't make sense for us to pursue these extra EV stations. So, um, you know, we want to make the decision based on all the available information. So is that the best way for, for us to do this? Yeah, I think if you reach out to your account executive, let them know your plans and your concerns. And, you know, I know the account executives and, uh, and I can work with them to kind of help answer your questions. That would be very helpful. I think that's what we really need is some guidance. Um, David and um, Lori and MA, would you be able to put together some different combinations that we could um, reach out and get some help with? We'll talk with Chris. Yeah. yeah, I'd be happy to help with facilitating that. Um, and just for a little bit of context here, we have an outstanding um, federal grant application through the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, to install a combination of level two and three chargers. And so I imagine 
a lot is contingent on whether we get that grant or not. But if we do get that grant and are looking at a scenario where we are looking to install level three chargers, that would be where we'd be trying to work in that EV2 rate. Whereas if we stick with just level twos, if the grant doesn't work out for whatever reason, um, I think for now the G1 non-demand rate definitely looks like our best bet, but that's absolutely something I'd be willing to pursue um, getting more specific readings on. And, and Chris, the current plan is for four ports for fast chargers? Uh, so four stations, which would be eight ports or for, sorry, for the fast charging level three, that would be, yeah, four ports. Four ports. So, yep. so that would be, they all can draw a hundred kilowatts each. So that would put us in the EV2, right? If they're on a, so um, maybe Steve can answer this with the make ready. Can they be connected to our existing meter? If they're what I don't know how many feet away, they're not going to be that far away. Quarter of a mile, not even. No, they're <laughs> they're probably within 100 feet of each other. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 100 to 150 feet maximum. Yeah, they're just across. Yeah, they're across the parking like, lot and. Oh, yeah. right. No. So, because there's a new um, make ready proposal as well, but. Wouldn't it just tie into the existing meter box? We'd need to pursue that with them and yeah. see if we could get that on the same meter or if it would have to be a separate one. And I'm not sure of the answer to that right now based on our current plans. Okay. Yeah, the way the project at the, uh, the Leary lot is currently designed, um, it's, you know, because you are looking at four ports. Of Speed, we can't, we can't hear you again. Since you are looking at four KW each, uh, the way the project is currently designed, um, you know, 800 KW total, um, we would definitely need a separate dedicated pad mount transformer for the, the service. Um, so that's sort of the way that the project is currently designed and the way that my um, incentive letter to you is uh, based off of. And if we only installed level two, could they just... Can we that, stop screen sharing? Oh, sure. It's exciting. <laughs> Thank you. So Lori, I think you had a question. You wanted to know um, if the if we only had level twos, we would have no separate connection. Is that correct? Lori, what was your question? Yeah, that's my question. I just wasn't sure if. Steve was ready to hear, hear it now. Because my understanding initially was that we could expand that meter box to take up to 10 ports. That's what I- For the level two installation um, <clears throat> that we have planned at the, uh, the town hall, that would be the case, yep. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any questions at this point? Well, um, I just want to say thank you very much. This is very um, helpful and it explained a lot to me. Um, David, uh, are you all set for your next, um, what your homework is? Just come up with some combinations. I uh, will work with Lori on that, yes. Okay, and then Chris, and then Chris will reach out to our account um, person and we'll go from there. Okay, everybody? Terrific. And Mike, are you going to um, circulate the slide presentation to folks? I've already sent that along to Chris okay. and uh, Casey. Okay, great. Perfect. Perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. Chris, uh, I can use that too. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, thank you all. We really appreciate it. Thank you for being willing to meet with us. You're yeah, this is really helpful. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. All right, everybody. Um, we'll close the meeting. And... Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, why don't my, uh, um, David, why don't you go ahead and, and adjourn first as the Energy Committee? Oh, you Energy own... Committee, yes. Uh, Laura, you want to move adjournment? They didn't have a quorum. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they didn't, didn't have, have a quorum. quorum. Okay. We didn't All make right. decisions either. David, so. David, can you hang on a second? Um, sure. Other piece I wanted to bring up with you, Chris, is that. Um, Separate from the energy charge, each port has a three and about three hundred dollar software fee per year. So I don't know if that's part of your 
calculations when we think about this. So that is a good point. I'm not actually too familiar with the software charge. Um, so that's definitely another cost to consider. Um, Each oh, quarter. Yeah. Right. And that's that's why we went to Greenfield Savings Bank to get that starter money um, to cover that uh, fixed cost. I didn't know about the demand charge kind of fixed cost piece. So it's great that we have this new G1 rate. Yeah, they're back there. Um, but it's, so when we're considering how many charging stations, oh, I'm still trying to talk to okay. Carolyn. Okay, so when we're considering how many charging stations, we do still have to consider that um, that software fee per port. Sure. So, um, yeah, we want to make sure that we have a, a true picture of the cost. I'm, I am 100% supportive of putting these charging stations in because I think it's well, what's going to happen. But honestly, we can't, uh, our budget, we can't afford to subsidize it. So we're going to have to do something in the interim or transition. So when you guys are thinking of something, just keep that in mind. Is there a possibility of a transitioning? You know, can we put in the you know, the transformer and the, you know, the wiring to handle more, but only put in two. So we only get charged with two, you know, something like that. I, I don't know. Just try to come up with some combinations that we can afford with the least amount of subsidy. Because, I mean, we should be trying to get our money back. <laughs> I feel like we got ripped off in the I last second that. Yeah. That I'm a little... Uh, turned off by is the you know offering these free to us and like get them now you know while it's hot kind of thing where I, I'm not really sure is if if we were to just get another charging station or two next to the one that we have so we have like six ports all together at a much lower rate the 25 cents per kilowatt or 30 cents like some of the other towns do and let that run for a couple of years before we want we see if we want to go to a fast charger which well, I think political pressure is going to make them have another rate adjustment because you can't, you cannot be making people switch over and then charge everybody for, uh, you know, this giant subsidy. I'm not sure if this is our last and final chance to get a free charging station either. I don't know. I can't see the future, but. Uh, Chris, oh, uh, I, I'm just curious, Chris, what you've got going with the um, federal grant. So the federal grant, um, we're expecting a decision on by some point later in the summer. I believe August was initially the timeline expected for answers. Um, so until we know the answer to that, a lot of the plans are a little bit contingent. Um, but, but what's at stake? What What is the grant? The grant for the federal, uh, the federal grant application that we submitted is for two level three chargers and two level two chargers in addition to the one that we have now um so that would be a total of eight new ports four of which would be fast charging um that would definitely clear the 100 kilowatt charge that would push us into ev2 territory um our contingency plan if we don't receive that grant is to um obtain grant funding for two additional uh, level two chargers. And we already have obtained grant funding for two new level two chargers. Um, but regardless, if we have uh, just the existing one, if we add two more, or if we add four more, that would still be well under the 100 kilowatt territory that would push us into being able to potentially be under the EV2 category of rate. So um, the G1 non-demand charge, I think we're going to be very satisfied by in the near term. Um, by the fact that our demand charges are going to disappear. Yeah, no, that's big. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn, I, I heard what you said. We'll work on that. Um, I, yeah, just we shouldn't be in the in the energy business, really. But um, you know, in in general, I'm in favor of doing as much as we can, even if we can't even use it yet. Um, because well, I'm that's why I, I want to see if we can install the proper infrastructure under our yeah. um, parking lot and then maybe only hook up a couple or yeah. one yeah. or none. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just look at the different pricing and then see what we can do at a later date. Because yeah. if if people complain enough, 
and we have we are not meeting our climate goal. I can't imagine the state isn't going to be doing some subsidies or the federal government at some point. Yeah. I mean, so who knows? Two, uh, two things. Um, Emmy had her hand up, but I'm I'm not sure if Steve Svoboda has his hand up. I, yeah, he does. You know, oh, oh I do. I, I I didn't actually physically put it up, if, but yes, I'm I'm here. It does sound like once uh, getting the demand charge eliminated is, is the is the biggest thing to and getting whether it's more um, two or four more chargers. I mean that would that would set us up for at least the near near term. So yeah, so it sounds good. Thanks, Chris. Thanks to everybody. That does seem like it was a good meeting and having them, you know. Uh, change that i'm glad to hear that it the accounts already changed so much better than where we were yeah. yes. absolutely i appreciate everybody on the energy committee bringing this to our attention um because if i hadn't known about the demand charge issue i wouldn't have been able to uh get in touch with eversource in time to make that uh rate change uh right before the new fiscal year started so mm -hmm. i don't know if we'll see any instantaneous results but i think we're going to start seeing much lower energy bills for the existing ev charger mm -hmm. And Emmy. My, my thought is um, that with the level three chargers, we'll be getting people off of 91 um, to come into town, to buy some lunch, to do this and that. So I think there's also an advantage if we can possibly get a couple of level three chargers um, there, it'll, it'll help, it'll, it'll help bring people into town. Yankee Candle hasn't. <laughs> Historic Deerfield hasn't, but maybe some EV chargers will. Just throwing <laughs> well, that in. Yankee, I mean, Yankee Candle and Treehouse Brewing have their own chargers. So they're, I mean, it's, they're, it's, they're it's level twos. They're, they're level twos. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. So um, the other the other piece is that um, probably at some point in the near future, almost all automakers are going to be switching to the uh, Tesla Universal. You as the, we're not going to have you know, different flavors of plugins. It's gonna all look the same. Yeah, yes. And, you know, probably these these things, all you do is you just change the port, um, you know, the nozzle that goes into your car. But, you know, GM has adopted Tesla standard and, you know, it's, it, it's pretty much gonna happen. So um, why would anybody plug into the level two chargers then? No, I mean, level twos exist in Tesla. No. They, I'm saying if, if we are planning something for the future, does it make sense to install any more level twos? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yes. I pull up. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what we're just we want you guys to talk about. Yeah. That's what we we want to hear the recommendation because uh, you know it's all going to be a speculation one way or the other. So, yeah. what does it look like? You know, is somebody like me not going to buy a Suburban? I'm going to buy, I'm waiting for a bigger vehicle uh, to be electric. And then what would I do? I mean, that's what I'm looking at. But what do you all think from your personal perspective, as well as what you think reading what, what's going forward? What is your best guesstimate for us? Knowing that we have a wicked tight budget and really can't subsidize a whole lot and, yeah. and really feel like we've been ripped off so in on this whole thing so that's what we're looking for is you guys hash out what you think your best perspectives and come back to us and let's talk about it some more and then we'll make us some kind of decision it's just right now i feel like i don't have enough information to make a really good decision on the Leary lot. And we are moving forward on the Leary lot. So what's the timeline there for paving? Well, when would infrastructure need to go in? That's we haven't put out a bid because we don't have a final design. So it's, you know, possibly by the end of the year. We're, we're hoping, I would hope by the fall, we're yeah. gonna start breaking ground. But That's still very feasible. Um, and sorry to butt in here, but if anybody has any specific questions or concerns about the Leary lot, I certainly invite everybody to come to the public meeting that's happening on Monday. Uh, <laughs> shameless plug for that. It was originally scheduled for this past week, yeah. but we ended up having to move it because of a couple of other, other meetings. So 6 p.m. right here, also on Zoom on this same channel. Um, and feel free to attend. We certainly welcome everybody. Is it recorded? Is it will it be recorded. Yep. Okay. And Emma, do you have another thought? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just trying to 
and maybe everybody wants to go home, but um, yeah. if I'm if, if I'm a user in town, uh, I'm going to probably charge at home if I possibly can. So most, unless I'm working, if in other words, I'm not going to come downtown to plug in if I can plug in at home. So I think a lot of our outside, you know, a lot of the usage is going to be people from outside. And I think that's how we kind of need to think about as we move forward. Yeah. And also, I just want to say, I think it'll be helpful to talk to other towns and get their experience. Um, right. in, in Shelburne, they they charge um, $5 an hour after the first four hours, which is even very generous um, to let somebody not have a, a parking fee for the first four hours. But the other and the other rates you can see on that map I sent around, like 20 cents a kilowatt hour, um, 30 cents a kilowatt hour. So, but they, the woman in, in Northfield said that's still not covering their their costs. But I don't know if they've changed over to the new rate. So I don't know. Yep. But yeah, what's so yeah. just to recap, I mean, if we want this to be uh, in time for the Leary lot, you have a finite number of weeks to do your work with Chris because, um, you know. But once the Leary lot's designed and going forward, then, you know, we have to have this decision made. So I would, I would say you have, I would say you'd have till we get the information on the grant. The grant is going to determine some of our um, position as well. If right. we don't get the grant, uh, you know, that's just one less thing that's in favor of a charging station. So, um, yes. But I'm I'm really sorry. I haven't heard if Joe Comerford is for sure coming into town, but I, the last I heard she was. And so I, I need to go because I need to talk to her about the Stillwater Bridge. Um, Thank you. We, we don't know if there's- I'm in favor of the bridge. Don't jump. Yeah. Look out of your diving outfit. Yeah, don't well, jump, don't jump. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I haven't heard if they're going to be diving today to find out if there's damage. But if there is damage, we, of course, want the state, yes. even though it's our bridge, to fix it. So I'm going to be very nice and say, please, temporary fix again. Um, we've been very successful and Joe's been wonderful. So, um, but I, 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 even though this is a really good meeting, I and I feel like yeah. we really made. So I'll really make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, and I'll second that. All right. Tim Hill, <laughs> G. Hi. Carolyn, yes. Hi.